Today, we're gonna to be biking through Germany's most beautiful valley, along hidden woodland paths and by sapphire streams as we adventure our way to Linderhof Palace. The Etala Forest is a stunning woodland getaway, hiding in plain sight. Overshadowed and surrounded by Germany's largest tourist attractions, Neuschwanstein and the Zugspitze, this is a true hidden gem. To truly explore it, I've based myself here in the town of Oberammergau for a long weekend. Yesterday, and our previous video, was dedicated to the gorgeous valleys, simple hikes, and amazing food to be had here. So if you haven't seen our Oberammergau already, then you know what you need to watch next. After this video, of course. Don't worry, it'll all still make sense. Because today, we are leaving the towns behind to explore the tranquil paths, stunning abbeys, and the famous King Ludwig II's cottage-sized palace, Schloss Linderhof. With so much to do in just one day though, how are we going to be getting around? Now most people will get there, in fact most people will traverse this entire region by car, which is my least favourite way to get around, especially when there are so many fantastic public transit options, plenty of trains and plenty of buses. But you know what this video is about, I want a more out into nature adventurous vacation, so I'm going to rent an e-bike, which I have gone ahead and reserved ahead of time over at Opa Amagal's best bike shop. We have an eine uh, e-bag reserviert. So, thank you. Yep. Cool. Look there. Uh, Easy. Now these are some noble steeds, especially for the price. Bosch mid-drive engines, hydraulic disc brakes, a basket, all for about 30 euros a day. In fact, even cheaper if you book them for multiple days. I got these two bikes for three days, 100 euros. Fantastic. But now, enough waiting around. Let's get out of town and into those forest paths. I loved hiking yesterday. I can't imagine how much I'm gonna love riding today. Unfortunately, before we can bike along the river, we need to bike through town. Well, that's not too bad. What are all these cars doing here? Don't they know you could take the train? But just along this road, right after the bridge, you can cut down along the river itself, and that's when the biking is going to get really good. I know it's going to be hard to believe, but this is going to be the worst of all the scenery. It gets better and better from here. I wonder if we'll see any fish in the river. I hope so. Looks like we've got a little bit of a crossroads. Now, of course, the mission today is to go to Linderhof, but we're a few hours ahead of schedule, and with this magnificent cloud coverage, I think we can fit one more thing into the itinerary. I want to go to the Etala Monastery, which is also a brewery. It's just a little diversion in the opposite direction. We'll be fine. We might need to ride quickly, though. I really hope this diversion's gonna be worth it. But hey, for a cool monastery and a brewery, I'm willing to roll the dice. The cars are ruining the vibe a little bit. That's okay, it's only like a kilometer next to the road, so not really a big deal in the grand scheme of today's bike ride. Oh my God, is that the monastery? I mean, it has to be. That looks incredible. I bet you can't see it on the GoPro at all. I couldn't find any bike parking, which feels a little antithetical since biking is the best way to get around here. Found plenty of car parking though. Big disappoint, but uh, anyway, no one's gonna steal a bike by a wall in a monastery, right? That would be very ungodly. Talk about first impressions. We have been to quite a few Bavarian monasteries, Andex, Weltenburg. They all brew beer and I love them so much, but what on earth is this? 
It's like they took a normal sized monastery and just like times it by 200. It's just so impressive. It's really difficult to tell the scale on camera, I think. There is no way the camera will do this justice. I mean, usually Bavarian monasteries look like this, right? The kind of the normal walls with the plastered over painted beautiful. That marble work? Are we in Rome? <laughs> Can we go inside? Yeah, I think so. Let's go check it out. <laughs> you think it matches its opulence? Well, that's a little bit embarrassing on two parts. One, I forgot it was Sunday. And two, I forgot the monastery was still an active religious complex. These things are just fancy, you know, Baroque breweries in my mind. But no, they're going for it in there. That looks awesome. Unfortunately, I'm a bit late, so I've missed the beginning. It won't really make much sense if you don't get the beginning. And I'm not dressed for it either, so I'm gonna skip it. Oof, the sun has come out and it's giving me sun sneezes. Ugh. It's making recording really hard. Now, besides the obvious beauty of this monastery and the brewery coming up in a minute, the history is also incredibly fascinating. This Benedictine monastery dates back to 1330, when Emperor Ludwig, during his coronation in Rome, vowed that he would create an awesome monastery in a place of strategic importance along the trade routes between Germany and Rome. And so this is where it stands, and it is damn cool. During the 1700s, it sadly all burned down and they built the actual structure you see behind me now, during the Etala Golden Age. Very Baroque, very opulent. And fast forwarding to the 1900s during World War II, a lot of the monks here were essentially put on monastery arrest, not allowed to leave the complex because they were using their preaching influence to preach anti-fascism which was not very popular amongst the ruling crowd at the time. We stand anti-fascist monks. <laughs> they also smuggled and hid a lot of art that would have otherwise been destroyed here amongst the cellars and hollows of the monastery. 700 years of fascinating history, all culminating in this beautiful place. I knew I would like this monastery. I mean, I've loved Weltenburg and Andex, videos you should check out if you haven't already. But I'll tell you what, this place has blown me away so far. Prost. <laughs> I cannot think of a better way to cap off our little tangent to Airtel than drinking a beer in this absolutely beautiful cafe. I mean, the building is fantastic. I have loved walking around it. But sitting here and getting a beer, that is wonderful. But the most important question is how does it taste? I mean, it's a really fantastic Hellas brewed right here in the monastery. They make a variety of different beers. They're more famous for some of their wheat beers and cluster beers, which are all a little bit too complex and heavy for an incredibly hot day like today. This, at least to me, is a Hellas und Radler kind of day. So if you don't mind, I'm gonna finish this off in peace. Enjoy the sun, enjoy the views, rest my legs, because we've got a lot more bike riding to do today. All right then, rest and relaxation over. Let's get back on the bikes. We've got a lot of riding to do. We need to get out into the forests. <sighs> this is beautiful. Though the cars are ruining the vibe just a little bit, not gonna lie. Going 35 and a 30, breaking the speed limit on a bicycle. Cars have to learn how to deal. It really is so much easier to navigate around here than I thought it was gonna be. All of the signage, the clear cut paths, it's a dream. Devils. Man, biking is the way to go. See, that is what I'm talking about. Absolutely beautiful. That's gorgeous. 
It's cool seeing it from a different angle too. Yeah, I mean, we've pretty much ridden all the way around it. So cool. Anyway, we're gonna be late. We need to get back on the bikes. We're about to enter the Viedmuz now, which is a government protected kind of natural preservation area. Servus. It's a stunning environment and that is because they are protecting it. So yeah, it limits your freedom a little, but it means that everyone can enjoy it for more years to come. This right here to our left is the Kleiner Amma, and it is the most beautiful bit of water in all of Bavaria. And I will fight you in the comments. Now, I am sorry if the footage is starting to get a little samey samey. Filming on an e-bike is not exactly my forte, but I hope you will all agree that it is incredibly beautiful and a lot more varied than I thought it was gonna be. I mean, you have to stop the bikes here, right? It's tap water clear. That's insane. <laughs> There are so many fish in this stream, and I don't think they have any idea how good they have it. There was a snake? It was in the middle of the path? Oh God, I hope there wasn't actually a snake. Oh, I'm gonna have a horrible day. You have to be out here. You gotta be sweating. That's how you earn the views. Well, not YouTube views. You, my channel doesn't earn those, but like, you know, views that you can see. Oh, that cow's getting frisky. I think what I like the most about this path though is that it's just not that difficult, especially with an e-bike. You know, I'm, I'm not a mountain cyclist. My legs aren't fit in that way. I mean, if I was doing this on a normal bike, I'd be huffing and puffing, which wouldn't make it the best means of transport to go to a legendary palace. But with the e-bike, it's kind of flattening out all the curves. I'm really getting to enjoy the downhill and ignore the uphill. It's just a really lovely way to get around. There's nothing about this trail that's too particularly technical. It's, uh, it's an absolute dream. Oh yeah, this is amazing. Maybe this trail will make a mountain biker out of me yet. At least a cross country rider. Cool. Now we get to go through a lumber yard. This ride has everything. Yeah, it doesn't look like we're going uphill, but on the way down, we're not gonna have to pedal once or engage the motor. It probably looks completely flat on camera. There's a bit of a gradient. So I have been able to keep a pretty good pace and ahead of Camille for most of this bike ride, but the last section up to Linderhof is gonna be some elevation gain. Now granted, we're on e-bikes, so it's not gonna be that bad, but what e-bikes really do is they turn it into a cardio game instead of a strength game. Because in Germany, you can't have an e-bike with a throttle. That would make it an electric motorcycle. It has to be pedal assist. So you always have to work if you want the motor to engage. And this is where Camille comes in. Her cardio is incredible. So she'll just drop it to the lowest gear, start sprinting on the pedals, putting down almost no torque herself, and the motor does the rest. She can fly uphill. Me, on the other hand, I cannot pedal that fast for such a long time. 
I just couldn't, oh my God, she's so far ahead. How is she doing this? Uh, so you did wait for me eventually. Oh. How did you do that? I put it on the lowest setting and went as fast as I could. <laughs> Sorry, I feel bad for leaving you behind, but if I didn't do that, I wasn't getting up there. Uh, it's okay. Don't worry about it. Thank God. I mean, I could have died and you would have, you'd have never known. I mean, what if there'd been a snake and I needed you? No, I was thinking about this. Like, I looked at my watch and I was like, okay, if he's not up in 10 minutes, I'll <laughs> you turn will ride back down. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thank God for e bikes, though. Yeah. Water break over. We're making bad time now. We need to speed up. So it's a 25 minute walk. So that means on a bike, pretty much there already. You know, I have absolutely no idea what to expect with this palace. I mean, you know, King Ludwig II, he lived in it. So it's gonna be opulent as all. But other than that, you know, I really don't know much about it. Oh, <laughs> and here we are. What a beautiful scene to arrive to. Not a bad entrance, huh? Just biking around the corner and seeing this. We did it. Yeah, you did, high five. That was so much fun. It wasn't that hard, right? No, not really. I yeah. thought it'd be harder. Exactly, that wasn't too bad. The heat is starting to get to me a little bit now, but none of that matters. We've made it to the palace. One weird thing though, is that there's no bicycle parking. I mean, getting here by bicycle is incredibly common, but they don't have a bike park. Instead, you okay. toss them behind the hedge. This feels I guess so we'll wrong. do that now. I did ask a security guard. He said, put them in here. So behind the hedge we go. Bye bye. <laughs> I mean, I suppose they don't ruin the vibe hidden back here, right? This feels very un-German, too. There's yeah. like a place for everything. Right, right. Why isn't there <laughs> bike parking? You would, you would imagine there would be bike parking. We need to go get in line. It is almost our time to go in the castle. Okay, and as we exit the hedges, we need to be fast. Linderhof Palace does guided tours throughout the entire building in English and in German, though I would recommend that you book yours online before you get here, because they can sell out pretty fast. The entrance is right behind me at these electronic gates, but unfortunately, there is no filming of video inside. So if you want to see the inside for yourself, you're gonna have to come here by yourself. However, I'll give you a review once we're done. That was absolutely incredible. I just loved it, it was wonderful. The guide that we had was so enthusiastic. He had so much to say about what was only just a few rooms, incredibly overly opulent Ludwig Spy-esque rooms, of course, but still, there weren't too many. So the tour itself was short, it was manageable, and by the time that you're starting to get opulence fatigue and you wanna get back out in these lush gardens, you're done. Absolute perfection. I would 100% recommend it to almost anybody. Next up though, we're not done in Linderhof yet. It's time to explore the palace grounds. That cold mist, I needed that. It is so hot today. Oh, and a rainbow, awesome. And I think my favorite thing that I learned on the tour was about how Ludwig Spy actually lived here. He held court from here. People would shuttle back and forth from Munich twice a week, bringing him papers from the government that he needed to read over and sign, which I'm sure he did while lying in bed. I mean, don't get me wrong, eat the rich, but maybe after they've built something cool we can all enjoy once they're gone. And just like the palace itself, the gardens are the perfect size. I don't have opulent garden fatigue yet either. I think everything about this has just been so perfectly proportioned. Has Linderhof turned me into a palace person? Oh, I hope not, but maybe. You can't help but just smile here. I mean, look at this. It's painful. It's physically painful how beautiful this is. The bright red flowers, the golden statues, and it's just all such a doable size. It doesn't feel like way too much. Everything feels perfect. 
lot of you guys are always asking us during our itinerary consultations if Neuschwanstein is worth it, if you should bother, if it lives up to the height. That's for you to decide depending on what you are interested in. But I can absolutely say that I enjoyed Linderhof Palace so much more than Neuschwanstein. The tour was better, the tour guide was so enthusiastic, and the information they presented to you was just very concrete, succinct, and manageable. I loved it. Yeah, I think this is a really good example of quality over quantity. Ooh. Yeah, I think a lot of times Neuschwanstein is as... <laughs> That's as quantity as you can get. Yeah, exactly. It's very McMansion-y. It's a lot. I think it's kind of ugly. I'm just, I'm not a fan. It wouldn't stand up to a siege, yet it calls itself a <laughs> castle. <laughs> I just, I prefer Lenderhof after experiencing it now. I can't believe it took us this long living in Munich to finally come here. We have been here for years and been putting it off for so long. I'm kind of embarrassed. <laughs> hey, we got it done and we loved it and we're recommending it. Hey. Though our exercise for the day is not over yet, we do have to climb to the top. It says so in the rules. Oh, that water is so frigid. I love it. <laughs> Why do I keep choosing more exercise? <laughs> I'm so tired. Oh, I guess I keep choosing it because those are the views. Fair trade. And as always, perhaps it's time for me to say my catchphrase, don't lose sight of the forest for the trees because as beautiful as the flowers are, as beautiful as the palace is, there's a reason the palace was placed here. This valley was beautiful long before King Ludwig built his palace here and it will be beautiful long after. I, however, am very happy to be here to enjoy both. And one thing before I forget, if you ever see us out and about filming, never feel shy. You should always come up and say hello. We love meeting fans of the channel, other fellow travelers who appreciate our fantastic suggestions, if I do say so <laughs> myself. We have been recognized twice today. You're from home, huh? Yeah. <laughs> you, you know? You, I, I, oh, okay. I plan almost my entire trip. Really? Your videos. I love meeting you guys. I love the kind of people who love our videos. We've got something in common. And if you ever see me with like a group of friends in Munich and I'm just like hanging out, you are welcome to make me look cool. And as the sun begins to set on the glorious Linderhof Palace, our mission is complete and so is this video, but not our time here in Etal. We still have plenty more days left, plenty more to show you and do. But there's no time left to do it here. So go ahead and if you've liked this video, like it, comment your best bits, your most favorite parts, where are you going on your next vacation? But most importantly, subscribe and come back for more in about two weeks as the adventure continues here in Etal.